Sam Altman is getting to AGI come hell or high water, even if it costs him $50 billion a year. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Well, Sam Altman is on a bit of a media tour right now. He's done a number of interviews on college campuses lately. And while there's nothing hugely new, it feels to me like there is a different tone, a sort of declarative, energetic, profound tone that's coming through in all of these interviews. A couple of the highlight quotes that have been pulled out by various media outlets reinforce Altman's commitment to getting to AGI, his continued emphasis that GPT-4 ain't it, and a focus on AI agents as the future. Let's talk about this AGI commitment first. In one recent interview, Altman said, whether we burn 500 million, 5 billion, or 50 billion a year, I don't care. I genuinely don't as long as we can stay on a trajectory where eventually we create way more value for society than that, and as long as we can figure out a way to pay the bills. We're making AGI, and it is going to be expensive and totally worth it. Now, this, of course, is coming from a guy who also was reported to be out raising $7 trillion for a network of AI chip fabrication plants, so ambition is not a particular issue here. Now, what about ChatGPT? Altman is clearly almost embarrassed about how underperforming it is versus where we'll end up. He said once again, GPT-4 is the dumbest model any of you will ever have to use. Now, one really important thing, though, from a technical perspective, is that Altman also said that GPT-5 is going to be a lot smarter than GPT-4, and GPT-6 is going to be a lot smarter than GPT-5. Altman said, we are not near the top of this curve, and it is always going to get better. There have been a lot of questions, given how long GPT-4 itself or GPT-4 class models have been state-of-the-art, if we're coming up against some scaling limits. Some prominent researchers have suggested that we are, but Altman is clearly planting his flag in a different camp. Additionally, Altman is clearly pointing to AI agents as the next big thing. The MIT Technology Review recently wrote, A number of moments from my brief sit-down with Sam Altman brought the OpenAI CEO's worldview into clearer focus. The first was when he pointed at my iPhone SE, the one with the home button that's mostly hated, and said that's the best iPhone. More revealing, though, was the vision he sketched for how AI tools will become even more enmeshed in our daily lives than the smartphone. What you really want, he told MIT Technology Review, is just this thing that is helping you. He described the killer app for AI as a, quote, super competent colleague that knows absolutely everything about my whole life, every email, every conversation I've ever had, but doesn't feel like an extension. It could tackle some tasks instantly, he said, and for more complex ones could go off and make an attempt, but come back with questions for you if it needs to. Now, of course, a lot of AI hardware companies are experimenting with exactly this sort of thing. Recording ambiently, for example, everything that you're interacting with, or promising to be able to go off and actually do things for you. However, Altman isn't so sure. He said that while he thinks AI hardware will be cool, that for this AI agent future vision to come to fruition, quote, I don't think it will require a new piece of hardware. As for juicy details, when one reporter asked if he knew when the next version of GPT was slated to be released, Altman simply said yes. Beyond these interviews, OpenAI just made a major update to their website as well. When you go to OpenAI now, the first top panel is a ChatGPT field. When you fill in a question and press go, it brings you to the normal ChatGPT app. But there are also three other top panels, which many feel is giving an indication of how OpenAI sees its priorities. Next to the ChatGPT box is a research link, building safe AGI that benefits all of humanity. Next to that is OpenAI for business. Add the power of AI to your products, operations, and workforce. Fourth, interestingly, is Sora. Given that this has just been launched, we don't know how much these panels will actually rotate and whether they really do indicate a hierarchy of priorities or just if they're there right now. For example, will Sora be rotated out for whatever next cool thing they announce a little later on? If you scroll down the page, there are sections for, once again, ChatGPT, research, business, and developers, as well as a new story section that seems to be about use cases that are showing off how OpenAI is helping the world in a variety of ways. Finally, there is a news section. AI creator and educator Greg Kamrat writes, New OpenAI homepage. What's your read on what they signal with the new changes? Seems like a signal for a much larger consumer play, possibly getting ready to capitalize on the GPT-5 PR. The AI for Business account responded, A lot of good thoughts here. Just want to call out the change in art style, from bold colored shapes to soft abstract watercolors. Feels like they're moving away from just being a programmer's playground to being more accessible and humanistic. Good play for business acceptance. Now, interestingly, we will talk about that in the context of Anthropic and their recent announcement in the main part of today's episode. Ultimately, we don't know, but it does all feel like OpenAI is getting itself ready to make some moves at some point in the not-too-distant future. Speaking of use... We continue to see AI rolling out in a variety of different contexts. The latest is Sam's Club. 
The way that Sam's Club works if you haven't been there is that you have to have a membership to shop there. When you leave the store, a person checks your physical receipt to make sure everything is kosher. Well, now they are rolling out an AI version of that check, having done so so far at 120 of Sam's Club's 600 locations. Lastly today, a new survey from Accenture around big New York City Fortune 500 attitudes towards AI. And man, in a world where AI skepticism is on the rise, this study goes the exact opposite direction. Accenture surveyed 500 C-level executives in New York City, and of them, 97% believed that AI would have net positive impact on society. Those executives also said that they believe that the rise of AI skills will drive a trend towards skills-based hiring rather than hiring based on, for example, educational pedigree. In surrounding research, Accenture found that 63% of the hours worked in New York City could be either automated or augmented by generative AI. That is obviously an enormous percentage of people's work activity and shows the magnitude of this change. Anyway, really interesting to see such a positive focus study, especially compared to some of the other things that have come out. But that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI Breakdown.